Hello and welcome. This is the third of your masterclasses on writing your book. Now, the bit I said when my microphone was deciding not to talk to the big Google cloud in the sky was that there's a difference between quite liking to write a book and actually getting one published. Okay, it's a commitment. It's a decision. You can reach your 90th birthday and still not have your book done. Gary Vaynerchuk did a brilliant video this week. I talked about it in the Dare to Dream Bigger podcast this week about how when you talk to people in their 90s and ask them about their life, so often their sentences start with the words, I wish. I wish I'd done this. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd spent more time with this person. I wish, I wish, I wish. The reason I've created these masterclasses is I don't want your book to be an I wish I had done it on your 90th birthday, yeah? So the difference between a nice idea and your book actually getting published and making a different world, a difference in the world is, is just the decision to do it, the commitment. When I work with people on this and when I've been working with publishers and literary agents to find out what the blocks are, yeah, you can sit there saying, well, who am I to do this? And I'm not an expert, or I've got too many ideas, or I don't have enough ideas, or I'm not clear on the structure, or how do I make sure that it will resonate with people? All of that stuff is easily fixable, and I can guide you through it step by step. I can make that bit incredibly easy for you. The one thing I can't do for you is that commitment. So if your heart is calling you to write the book, all you need to do is make the commitment, the help, support, structure, guidance, block removing strategies, fear releasing stuff. That's all they're waiting for you. You just need to say, I'm going to do this. Yeah. When you've made that commitment, everything you need will come your way. So today we're going to talk about 10 ways it can grow your business because sometimes when you can see where the book fits inside your business strategy, it's easier to make that commitment and to say the yes. And that is my dream for you today. So if you've got any particular questions you'd like me to cover today, let me know via the chat box. If you're watching this on the replay, please still join in via the comments. I'm going to be keeping an eye on those too. So how do you think writing a book might grow your business? I'd love to know whether we can crowdsource what I've got on my bit of paper here today. <laughs> because I've got 10 ideas that were just top of mind that I've seen books do for people. These aren't theory or hypothesis. These are proven things that having a book can do for you. I'd love to hear from you via the comments what you think it could do too. There's one thing I want to say here is all of these things she says, boshing herself in the face in the middle of the masterclass. This is the beauty of life. <laughs> All of these things require you to actually create a physical book. Yeah. Imagine going to somebody and saying, hey, I've got this great ebook. Look at it on my iPad. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Every business owner and their dog has a freebie ebook opt in. Imagine being able to run a meditation retreat and say to people, I wrote this. Yeah. Can you feel the difference in credibility? Simply through turning the book into a physical thing. There is nothing wrong with ebooks. I've got plenty of them. You know, you can create an ebook, it can change the world, it can go viral, it can be brilliant. But the credibility you get through having a physical product in your hand, if you're standing on stage, if you're in a meeting, if you're running a workshop, if you're doing a video, that physical product is what's needed for the book to grow your business. An ebook probably won't. So here's the thing. Um, I never used to have a Kindle and my mum died recently and left the Kindle for me and the kids because it means that the children, you know, if we're going on flights and things, we can keep half their library, half their books in the Kindle. So I started actually responding to these big promotions that big business gurus have been doing about, hey, get my Kindle book for free. And I've even got books I've paid for on business strategy and stuff I'm interested in. When they're on my Kindle, how many of them get written, actually read? Almost none. Some people love reading off screen, some people don't. 
if I have a book that I've gone and bought and it's physically on my shelf, it reminds me, it nags me, it waits till I've read it. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of Daniel Priestley's work lately. I love, you know, he resonates so much with the way I work too. And having a physical copy of his book means it gets written. And I'm one of these terrible people. I will scribble notes in the margins. They're covered in sticky things. You know, I've got, um, no, nope, I've not got one. I can easily show you. But that happens to me with a physical book. And the credibility you get from a physical book, because you've made that commitment and you've delivered is huge. But here's the secret, okay? The difference in time between having an ebook and a physical book, when you know what to do, is about one hour. <laughs> if you can write an ebook, it takes an hour, maybe a few more if you need to do some more typesetting work. It takes very little time at all if you've got somebody who knows what they're doing with graphics and web stuff and you know formatting on Word. It takes almost no time at all to turn that into a physical book and get it up for sale on something like Amazon. You can go the whole, you know, the whole party and you can actually get a print run done. But the difference between an ebook and a physical book is about an hour. The difference in credibility between those two is enormous. Okay. So that's my challenge to you is don't just commit to writing your book, commit to spending that extra hour to turn it into a physical product. So the first way your book can grow your business is it's about the most impressive business card you can offer. I've talked in a previous masterclass how one of my books that's quite small in format doesn't cost me a lot more to print than my business cards. So if you imagine being able to go to a networking event, and I did this at the Institute of Directors earlier this year, I went to a networking event, everybody's handing out business cards. And for those who were interested, I just gave them a copy of the book. And funnily enough, they got in touch. If I'd just given them my business card, it would have got lost in the bottom of their bag if it even made it that far. So your book is your business card. Even if they never read it, the credibility it gives you is huge. This is why it's really important when you write your book to make the cover compelling and what's on the back is really to entice the reader in, but also to have a little mini author bio because we're not writing novels here. We're looking at nonfiction books with this masterclass series. You need something just, two or three lines, your micro elevator pitch. What is it you stand for? What's the difference you're here to make? Who do you love working with? And a little bit that's personal at the end. You know, one of my books, for example, says that I live with six mindful chickens and a very bouncy Jack Russell. I know another author I've worked with, his bio finishes with, you know, he lives with his wife, his children, and a very scary mortgage. <laughs> you can make it humorous. That's the bit people go to. And also, I strongly encourage you to have your photo on the back of your book. It can be quite small. There's something that happens when we see someone's face. Spending a little bit of money to get a professional headshot done, and these days it really doesn't need to cost very much, gives you that personal connection. When someone's picking your book off a shelf, or if you're giving it to them, or you've sold it to them, and then every time they pick it up, they see you and they reconnect with you. So it's your business card. And I said before, I even put them on my business cards. So I have a stack of business cards that have got my book covers on them. If I'm out with somebody and you know they want to stay in touch, I kind of gauge which of the books would work best for them and I give them the business card. Yeah, and then they sit there and they're like, oh, right, what's that? Oh, that's one of my books. Wow, I'm not superhuman, I'm not amazing, but that extra hour it takes to go from the electronic version to the paperback version suddenly gives me the credibility because most people don't do it. So that's number one. It's your, it's your biggest business card in the world. If you're doing a speaking event and you're not allowed to sell from the stage, at least give out your business cards with your book, with your book cover on the front, at least have your books with you. Even if you're not selling them, have a secret box out the back. People are going to want to buy them. Yeah have your books with you. That is the best business card you can have. Because if somebody is really keen, they're going to open. If they're curious, they're going to open your book and start reading. I had this happen the other day at my chiropractor. He um, sells my books, bless him, <laughs> particularly those on meditation, mindfulness, and gratitude. And I was sat in the waiting room 
there was a lady opposite me and I noticed he, he has display copies of my books on the coffee table. And I noticed she was flicking through one of my books and it felt a little bit like being in front of the headmaster's office. You don't know if you've been called in because you're about to get your knuckles wrapped or praised. And my gauge is whether they make it past three or four pages, because once they do, they're in and they're hooked. And she just wasn't putting it down. She was just reading and reading and reading. And even when she was called for her session, she just didn't actually want to put the book down. So I introduced myself as the author of the book and she was just blown away. And we got it in the comments here. And I, as you know, I don't mention names of who said what in the comments. You're entitled to your privacy on the replay. But yes, to most people, producing a book is magic that ordinary folk can't do. OK. You and I know it's not magic. All you need to do to write your book is make the commitment and then allow yourself to be guided through the process. It takes a bit of dedication. That is it. So number one, it's your business card. Number two, it establishes you as the go to expert in your niche. Now, this is why on the author intensive program, we look really carefully about what the topic of your book is going to be. It needs to be something that resonates with your soul. It, it can't come from here. It's got to be the next big message you want to put out there because you're going to live and breathe this while you're creating it, while you're marketing it, while you're doing your speaking gigs, while you're creating courses about it. You really need this to be the next message your soul wants you to get out there. When you do that, and we've talked before about in the first masterclass about why you need to be able to mind read your customers and you really need to be focusing on imagining you're writing for one person that helps you to create your niche because you're going to get a lot more traction for your business if you own a small niche than if you're one of many players in a big niche and i know that it's terrifying for business owners to say i'm i stand for working with this kind of person and i'm less keen on that kind of person if you don't do it, you're just going to be blah. Yeah, you're going to be beige. When you've got total clarity about who your dream reader is, you will magnetize them. They will talk about it. You will own that niche. When people need to talk to experts, you will be positioned as the expert in that niche. I was, um, looking at a book somebody had recommended to me on Amazon the other day. And I read, you know, I, we all read the comments <laughs> and the reviews. And one of the top reviews was, it's a great book, but she kind of assumes that we're all middle-aged women with children. And this had really put the reader off. So you could argue, well, that, you know, you should open the niche wider. No, it's that the description, yeah, or the title or the subtitle should somehow attract people that you're writing for this book was clearly written for women in their 40s with young children you need to be prepared to be that specific in the blurb on the back of your book really help people see this is for me don't be scared of doing that there are so many people on this planet if you say this is my dream target audience for this book you're going to really rock yeah you're going to become the go-to expert. You will be famous in that niche. If you try and write it for everyone, you're going to have to dumb down your message so much. We talked in the first masterclass about the language and the words that your dream customers use. If you try and appeal to everyone, you can't do that. You won't talk to their heart. So when you are the go-to expert in your field, you will find that if you, you know, for example, I've done this on the radio, you hear something and you, you know, you can phone in and say, hey, do you want to get me on air? Yeah, I'm the author of this book. The researcher can instantly tell or the producer can instantly tell whether that's a good fit for the program. The same with media coverage in you know, print press, in newspapers and magazines. The same with podcast interviews. You can really hone it and say, look, I can see your audience is this. It's my audience too. And I fix this problem for them that you don't cover in your work. How about you interview me for your podcast? It's a brilliant way to become the go-to expert in your niche. So the third thing, it does get you more PR opportunities. OK, I work closely with a number of people in public relations and I also have people I go to for advice if I need to get a message out there to a wider world. 
when you've published a book on something, you become an authority. The only thing that I found that can give you more authority than a published book is a PhD. And I've looked at various PhDs over the years, been offered a few and turned them all down because I knew I couldn't focus for five years on just one topic. I, I'm too much of a, a dragonfly. But it brings you PR opportunities. You would be amazed how many journalists look for authors when they want to comment. Yeah, they'll look for a PhD, then they'll look for an author. When you look at who is getting interviewed on the hot topics of today in your field, somebody who, you know, you can say author of such and such instantly skyrockets up the list of people to be interviewed. You can, with yours for intensive, we look at how to actually build in PR opportunities as you're writing and launching the book and for your post launch, launch marketing. Now, here's one of the things that's changed over recent years. I've got dear friends in the publishing world that I've worked with for over a decade. 10 years ago, if you wrote your book, your publisher would market it for you. Yeah, you would just show up to the gigs that they arranged. That's not the case anymore. When you write your book, you still do most of the marketing. Your publisher will probably do the distribution and they will probably get it into the bookstores for you. But in most cases, they expect you to have grown what they call their platform. So, you know, thousands of people ready to buy the book. And I know so many authors, even with really big name publishers, who have to go and organize their own book tours. And when they organize the book tours, or even if that's set up by the publisher, they still have to phone the bookstore and say, I'm coming next Thursday. Have you ordered a load in? <laughs> because off, you know, and they have to phone the local newspapers. So as an author these days, even with a publisher, given how much of the PR and marketing you've got to do yourself, if you want to write a book, you might as well build that into the process, don't you think? You might as well say, well, okay, I'm actually going to use this to consciously be part of my public relations strategy, of my media strategy, of growing my platform, of becoming famous in my niche. And the book gives you a level of credibility that, as I say, is second really only to a PhD or lecturing at a university. So number three, that was number three. The other thing it gets you that comes under that PR is more speaking gigs. When people have got an event they're organizing, they, when people have got an event they're organizing, they will most likely prefer people who've got something that gives them credibility because it gives the event credibility. So if you want to be doing public speaking, having a book on your topic that you can show the audience is vital. You can also have a page on your website that tells people, I do speaking gigs. And you can even have a show reel in there if somebody's recorded you presenting. So number four, okay, it shows that you're not flaky, okay? Flaky people don't get books published unless they use ghost authors, ghost writers, and they're high level celebrities, yeah? <laughs> There's plenty of those. But in the nonfiction world, whatever it is that's your passion, you can't be flaky and get the book written. So it grows your business because people know that you're the real deal. When I hear people talking about me in social media and they say, oh yeah, Claire Yosa, she's that, that author and that mentor. I know the fact they've used the word author means they know I'm solid. Yeah, I'm not a fly by night. People wanna work with people they can trust. Your book shows that you know how to deliver. It shows you know your stuff and it shows that you've got courage because putting a book out there does take courage. All of that magnetizes the people who are there for the transformation or the experience that you deliver. So number five, whistling through these. And if you've got any questions or comments as we go through, let me know by the comments. Okay, and yeah, a couple of comments. Yeah, I've heard that so often from folk in self-publishing circles. Absolutely, publishers focus their efforts on big names that they know will pay off. Indeed, they do. I know people who have recently got contracts with the biggest self-help publishing company. I don't need to mention names. And it's got to the stage where often authors are actually having to pay the publisher. So instead of getting an advance now for being self, you know, for publishing and being paid to write the book, you actually have to pay the publisher. It's changed so much. So number five, I love this one. This one really resonates for me and it might do for you is you get creative. The creative process gives you new ideas. 
I've been writing the Dare to Dream Bigger book, which is the inside work handbook for entrepreneurs and passionate world changers. As I'm doing it and I'm going through each section, it's really sparking creativity for me. If I could do a video series on that, I could do a podcast on the other, I could do a masterclass on this. People really need a deep dive intensive on that. As I'm writing the book, it's feeding my creative ideas that's allowing me to create products that will inspire people. And I can then start weaving these products into the book for those who want a deep dive. For me, creativity is really, really important in my business. If I don't get to create, I get stagnant and I get bored and things just fall apart. Staying creative, staying at the top of your game, pushing those boundaries on how can I serve, how can I better help people is something your book will help you do. The more deeply you can serve people and the more you can tie that into their needs whilst delivering or what they want rather, whilst delivering what they secretly need, the more that will grow your business. So number six is people pay you to become your super fans. Now I find this one so often when, you know, it's, it's like sod funnels, write a book. Yeah. <laughs> so when people call you, they're pre-sold. If you've written a book and it resonates with people and you've woven in the stuff we do on the author intensive about how to subtly mention, how you can help people at a deeper level. If somebody emails or phones you, they've kind of already decided yes, they just need that physical, you know, that person to person contact to finally make the decision. I saw a beautiful example of this just this morning in one of the business groups I'm part of. A woman who is a coach who specializes in a very specific form of coaching had written a book that was a tight fit to her niche. Somebody had read it, she booked the discovery call and historically these discovery calls used to take this woman about half an hour to an hour to persuade someone to sign up for a coaching program and she didn't really like it and they didn't really like it what she's found since the book was published and today's call was typical the person phones and within about three minutes they're booked and she's able because she knows they're a really good fit for her and they kind of know that they're a really good fit. Those energies are in alignment and that the person can tell it from having worked through the book. The decision to work together becomes a no brainer. And she's also finding people are really happy to pay the fee that she charges. They feel they're getting excellent value because we all want to work with the expert. Nobody really wants to work with the bargain basement. Yeah. It's about a fair energy exchange for the value that you're delivering. So she has found since she published her book, the people who show up on her discovery sessions are pre-sold. It's so much easier. And she can really tell the difference between somebody who's read the book and who phones her and somebody who hasn't. And also somebody who's read the book shows up for the one-to-one the -one work, kind of already having started the process because the book is like the, what you want someone to do before they start working with you. So if you want clients to go to the next level in whatever it is that you do, having them show up already having read your book means you'll be able to get even better results for them. They've put in the homework before they even start paying you. This means they'll be even more delighted with the transformation and the experience that you offer, whatever that is in your industry. And it means they're much more likely to rave about you. So they arrive as super fans. It, the funnel, the book is a funnel. It fills your business with the warm leads. It's much easier to get people to make the commitment, both in time and money to work with you, and they will get better results. That's kind of a massive win, 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 isn't it? So number seven is people are much more likely to tell their friends about you. Okay. People are much more likely to rave about a book than an article. When you look at the half-life of posts in social media and in Twitter, it's down to minutes. <laughs> Unless you have an enormous following and the post gets shared heavily in Twitter, it's there and it's gone. Facebook isn't much better. Pinterest is just so noisy and people just love looking at the images. They've, the research shows it's not that common for them to actually click through to the website the image came from. YouTube's a bit better, but that requires a bit more effort with a video. People might share articles, but when you really look at the data, and I've been looking at Google Analytics and working with lots of other business owners on this in masterminds I run, 
when you look at the data, you might get loads of shares for a post, but you don't necessarily get the click throughs. So people are sharing your article, but action isn't being taken. It's not actually driving new customers or leads or you know, people who are curious about you. Whereas if people have read a book they love, they'll sit there in a cafe and tell their friends. They'll tell them on the school run. When did you last say to somebody out in the street, God, I read an article the other day. You just have to read it. And then you have to memorize that super long URL for them to be able to find the article. It just doesn't happen. But the last time you read a book that really touched you, I'm guessing you probably told people. I'm guessing you might even have given it to some people as a gift. So your book is a way of allowing people to connect with each other through the medium of what you've created. That kind of referral brings you in people who are going to really know, like, and trust you almost before they've read the first chapter. And when you get to the stage that people are giving each other your book, then you know that it's resonating for them. And when you're given a book by somebody, particularly if it's something that involves inner transformational work, that kind of thing, or solving a problem, you're much more likely to read it because that friend is going to know that you're struggling with that issue. So the recommendation and endorsement you get from that process brings you clients and people who are curious about working with you who really, really have almost definitely said yes in their hearts. So number eight, are you going to make a difference in people's lives? <laughs> and that will grow your business because people are more likely to talk about you. Okay, I found this with my podcast, for example, is people just randomly go and, you know, I see that I find myself suddenly tagged accidentally or deliberately in social media and see people talking about an episode. It's even more so with books. You know, I'll get completely random comments on Twitter with people actually sitting there holding my book in a photo because it helped them. And that always makes me blush. And it's always a bit, oh, thank you, shucks, you know. But the fact is you get to make a difference in people's lives. Now, that is surely the reason that you're running your business. Whether you are a coach or an IT consultant, it doesn't matter. You want to make a difference. You want to solve a problem. You want to help people create change. When you've written your book, you get to do that with people who would probably never stumble across your website on a Google search. You get to reach people, you know, the six degrees of separation, they now reckon is more like three or four, where if you need to connect with somebody, there's probably only three or four connections you need to go through to get to them. With your book, you bypass that completely. You can be on bookshelves in bookstores, you can be on Amazon, you can be in other online retailers. So that not only do you find people who are searching for the book, but because of the way these systems are set up, people who are just browsing, it can show up in their recommendations. It allows you to connect with people and make a difference in their life who would never have found your business in any other way. And it does that while you're asleep. <laughs> it's a 24 seven marketing machine for you, your business and the transformation you're here to make. So number nine, this one's really, really useful. It attracts joint venture opportunities. Now, what does that mean? Joint venture, by that, what I mean is the chance to work with other people who serve the same audience, but in a different way. People love to work with authors. If you've got a business owner, for example, who's running an online summit, if you're the author of a real physical world published book, you know, <laughs> that you can show on screen during the summit, your credibility gives them more credibility. Anybody can set up a website. Anybody can launch a business. Certainly in the UK, we have very, very low barriers to entry on setting up a business. In other parts of the world, it's a bit harder. If somebody is doing a program, if they've got a podcast, if they do an interview series on their website and videos or just articles, if they're running an online summit or an event, having published authors there gives them more credibility. So you are going to magnetize those opportunities to the extent that you're actually going to need to start saying no to some of them. Yeah. And people, authors love to work with other authors. So that's another way in too. You'll find you start attracting those opportunities. And when you go on to those summits, 
you can talk about the fact you're an author, you can talk about the fact you've published a book, you will know your subject inside out. If you follow the author intensive process we do, you'll know what the pain points are, you'll know how to phrase stuff, you'll know how to really connect with people and solve that problem in bite sized chunks. And here's the other thing, this is something I use all the time, is if somebody approaches you for something like that, you've already done your homework. And you can just use a chapter of your book as the content for that summit presentation. A lot of people I know turn down summit invitations because they say, oh, I've got to prepare this and I've got to think about that. And they start from scratch, but you don't need to. You just go to your book and go, you know what? That's the target audience. That's the overarching topic. This chapter fixes this specific problem is that the research I've already done, I remember we covered some of that in the first masterclass, but the research I've already done shows me is a really big issue. Double whammy, one, you'll do a brilliant summit presentation and you'll get called back for more publicity, but two, you will be the presenter on the summit that gets some of the best engagement and feedback and whatever the most wanted response is, the call to action you have for your summit presentation is gonna get a really high uptake from people who are really good fit with your business. So it's a massive win, win, win all around there again. And again, let me know if you've got questions, let me know if you've got any ideas on how a book could help your business that we've not covered yet. So number 10 is, okay, is it does massively build your platform. Okay, so my 28 day meditation challenge book, I've got images in that, for example, that are little affirmations or quotes that come from the book. Those are available on social media, people in the readers club can share them. I use a system called Edgar to help my best content stay evergreen. So it can kind of it helps with some of my social media scheduling so that I can make sure that things like those images stay top of mind for people. I find that grows my readership, it grows my Twitter followers just by having those images going out every now and then with those quotes. Yep, there's a link to buy the book or the course if they want to. But the reason I'm doing it is I want people to feel and experience how I could inspire them. Okay? So, it builds my platform because I built that into the book as I was going through the planning stage. And that kind of thing is in most of my books. The book that doesn't have them is my most popular book by far. It sells more than all my other books put together, but brings me the smallest number of customers because I haven't given them the ways to interact and I haven't used it yet. It's in my plan <laughs> using the strategies I teach on the author intensive. So my plan for later this year is to actually build that in retrospectively and to do a second edition of the book that helps people engage. So why is this important? Yes, it builds your platform, but it also allows your readers to engage. When they feel inspired from my books, they can go to the Readers Club, they can find that image, they can share it on social media. People love to share stuff that inspires them. It might be a bonus video, it might be a bonus article. It grows your platform and that becomes exponential. I found there was a point on Twitter beyond which, you know, up to which I had to work quite hard to get people to connect with me. And I went beyond that point and I haven't paid for Twitter followers. It's taken many years to get here. Beyond that point, my stuff just grows, you know, and I get a good number of new followers each day. I get loads of people I get to connect with and to meet people. I just, you know, I've got no idea how they find me. If you use clever hashtags, this is another top tip is have a hashtag for your book. There's two reasons for that. One, people love it. And if you have a hashtag that might be related to something they're searching for on social media, it helps it show up. Two, you can also track the mentions for the book. So you can actually go and click on that hashtag and see what people are saying and what they're talking about. You can also build it into your launch campaign. So right away from the moment you make the decision, I'm writing this book, yeah? This, this isn't a maybe, this isn't a one day, I'm writing this book you can start using it to build your platform. That will help you to pre-sell. It will help you to sell once you launch. It will help you to get the PR that you need. You know, even not having published the book yet. Have you ever got excited about somebody saying, hey, my, my ebook is launching next Thursday? Probably not. Have you ever got excited about somebody saying, hey, my new book is out next Thursday? Yes, yeah. So you can use it to grow your platform as you're writing, during the launch phase, during the long-term marketing. 
and with your readers. And of course, growing your platform means your day to day content, anything that you're marketing, any way you can help people grows too. So I want to give you a really big tip. That's the whistle stop tour of the 10 ways it can grow your business. How do you do this? For example, okay, so <clears throat> how do you talk about your business in the book without seeming salesy? <laughs> Well, the first thing is I strongly suggest you have lots of ways people can connect and interact with you. I don't mean that every page should have a link to your website, but if there's a bit where maybe there's a deep dive resource that you offer that's free or paid, mention it. Have one page for the links for your website in case they need to change. So you've only got one page to update and you don't have to reprint the book every time you change a URL. Have one page they can come to or one, I have a whole um, members club area now for my books, but keep it simple. Have one page with those URLs on so people can deep dive. The other one, as I say, have a readers club, have a way they can connect and engage, offer bonuses, opt-ins, deep dives, something that will entice them. For example, for the 28 day meditation challenge, they get MP3s of four meditations, one per week for the 28 days. The vast majority of people who buy the book unsurprisingly come and join the Readers Club. That means I get to help them by giving them the, rec the recordings because most people don't want CDs these days. And I've found if you have a CD in a book that goes into a bookstore, it tends to go missing. And then you get complaints or returns. But the other thing is it allows me to start building that relationship with them. And they arrive. I've already got credibility on the topic. The other one. I use this a lot in summits and in presentations where I'm not allowed to sell from the stage is you can just drop it into conversations in the case studies. OK, I might say, you know, and when I'm working with my one to one mentoring clients, blah, blah, blah. So immediately that says to people, oh, she does one to one work as they're going through the book and they realize they've got the problem. And you might say something like, you know, here's a, here's a sticky plaster fix. Of course, it's to really get to the root cause probably it's the kind of thing I would only do with my one-to-one -one mentoring clients it, it sows the seed in their mind that that's an option for them or I might talk about you know and I've got an online course that covers this in much more detail and here's a gem from it you're positioning yourself you're just sowing that seed of oh there's an online course on this and here's a, here's a sample thing from it that actually already helped me I might be more interested in that when you're sharing things like case studies, anonymity, protecting your clients is vital. The technique I tend to use is actually hybrid case studies so that nobody actually feels they're in there. I'll take elements from different clients because I really want to make sure that nobody sits there and reads the book and goes, oh my goodness, she just told the world about me. Because even if you don't mention a name, they'll still feel betrayed. And sometimes I will do hypothetical. If a client came to me with this problem, this is what we would do. So there are all sorts of ways and I'd love to know, let me know via the comments for your business model. What kind of thing could you say in your book that would help people know the way that you work and the kind of ways you can help them without appearing to say, come to me for one to one mentoring right away. Yeah. How could you phrase that? If you were doing some of the publicity that's going with your book. How could you drop it in there that, yeah, of course, I'm an author, but actually this is what I also do. Yeah. That allows you to sow the seeds that mean that you're selling and marketing without doing so. Because when you think about it, if you've got a product or a service that you know makes a difference, you're actually doing people a disservice by not telling them. For me, it drives me crazy if I read a business book, particularly that really resonates for me. And then it's really hard to find out more. I don't want to have to go to the author's homepage and search for more information. If they've written about a particular topic and they can help me more deeply on it, I want the link there and then. And if I'm, if I'm interested enough, I will take the book to my computer and go and read it. <laughs> yeah, People will do it. It works so much better with books than it does, for example, with print magazines or newspapers. People very rarely, it's so transient, they'll very rarely come back and actually look for the information. With a book, because it's got that credibility and they've invested hours into reading it instead of three minutes, the level of engagement and commitment is much higher and you are going to get a much higher rate of people coming and looking for that information, but make it easy for them. 
one of the things I strongly encourage on the author intensive program is actually to have a bespoke URL just for your book. Whatever, however beautiful your website is, have a website address for the book that doesn't mean people have to come and trawl through your website to find the extra information. So for example, one of my books, 52 Mindful Moments, it's 52mindfulmoments.com, the 28 day meditation challenge, the same. A year full of gratitude, the same. Yeah, a little book of daily sunshine is dailysunshine.com. Have a website for your book that makes it easy for them to deep dive, to find the information, to connect, to work with you. Have an about page on that website and it can all be within your main website, that doesn't matter. Have an about page on your website that tells them how you can help. Okay, so any questions so far? Because that kind of covers up what, pretty much what I wanted to cover today and I'm hoping you found it useful. But I'd love to hear from you. How could your book grow your business? Because I can only talk about what I've experienced personally and what I've worked with people on and what I've seen people doing. I'd love to know how could it specifically grow your business in your niche with your target audience? And what could you do as you're writing your book to make sure that you're creating it so that it proactively grows that and you don't find people love reading it but never actually take action to come and find you and work with you more deeply i hope that's been useful today let me know via the comments if you've got any questions and for those of you who are interested in the author intensive if you're ready to deep dive and actually get the vast majority of the stuff done to really get inside your customer's head, to get the structure of your book written, to make sure you're writing the book your soul wants you to write and planning all of that in so that all you then need to go and do is just the writing. Yeah, the hardest bit is done. The end of the early bird for both the April and the October intensives is actually Friday the 29th of April at 5 p.m. UK time. So this is your last chance to save and get the early bird rate. If you want to join us, full details are at authorintensive.biz. That's authorintensive.biz. I am so excited to get to share this with people, but it is only for people who are ready to say that definite yes. This is not for window shoppers. You'd be wasting your time and money. But if your heart is calling you, to make that commitment to say that yes and get guided through the rest of this process because it's the author intensive and then we do 10 weeks of working together so you can really get answers to your questions and hone that book figure out what to include figure out what not to include understand what's making those readers tick so that you are almost mind reading to solve their problems authorintensive.biz i would love to work with you on this so I'll be back next week with the fourth masterclass in this series, which is all about how to avoid the mistakes that mean most people will never get their book written. And if they get it written, they'll never get it published. And I really want to make sure you avoid these mistakes. So please join me next week. If you're watching this as the one off and you've not got the series yet, you can register, get the replays and the rest of the series at dare to dream bigger dot biz forward slash write your book that's dare to dream bigger dot biz forward slash write your book i hope that's been helpful today i'm going to sign off now i hope you have an amazing week <laughs>